Boys and girls, it is that time of year again. Football Manager 2022 is out. The new game is here. And that, of course, means an influx of new players who potentially never played the game before, especially with it being out day one on Xbox Game Pass on both Xbox and PC this year. If you are one of those new people, this video is very much for you. I'm going to be taking you through step by step how to set up a brand new Football Manager save as a new player. If you've been playing this game for years, this video is probably not for you. But if you have no idea where to start, this is definitely your video. And if you're so new you haven't even bought the game yet, I've even got a discount code for you at the top of the description below. But let's get into the video. Let's have a look how to set up a brand new game in FM22. Hello folks and welcome to a beginner's guide to FM22. I'm Kev and I'm going to be taking you through step by step how to set up a new save in FM22, particularly if you have no idea where to begin. If you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on. I do make daily Football Manager content, um, so there's going to be lots of stuff here for you to explore on your Football Manager journey, plus lots more Football Manager Guide videos over the coming days, weeks, and months as well. So make sure you subscribe, turn your notifications on so you don't miss out on any of that. But we are going to be going through step by step exactly where to begin. I'm assuming you've already got the game and you're facing a screen that looks a lot like this one. If you really are loading the game up for the very first time, you won't even have a team in the background or a most recent save to load up because you won't have done that. It will just be the FMFC, the Football Manager Football Club shirts in the changing room in the background, but it will it will look a lot like this and we'll take you through how to get things started. One of the first things you might want to do is head into preferences and just make sure that everything in here is working exactly how you want it to work. And um, specifically, you've got the zoom level correct for the computer that you're working on. Um, I play on a 125% zoom, so I play on a 4K monitor. Um, if you're on a normal 1080p monitor, 100% zoom, it's probably going to get the job done for you. If you're on a laptop um, on less than a 1080p screen and you still want to get all of the information on the screen, you might even want to drop the zoom down to 85, 95% just to make sure that you're getting everything on the screen. Play around with that until the game looks good for you. The other thing you might want to change on this screen is going into the formats tab and just changing all of this stuff to whatever you're most comfortable with. So I'm British, I'm in the UK, so I have the British pound um, and all of the weights and measures and things like that set up the way they are for me in England. So wages, for some reason, in English football, wages are talked about weekly, even though in every other profession you talk about it annually, but I know in other parts of the world annually works, so you'd switch it to annually. Uh, make sure temperatures in your format, weight, height, distance, all that kind of stuff, just so the game makes a little bit more sense to you. Because if you're used to dealing in metres and the game's trying to tell you someone's height in feet and inches, straight away that's an extra layer of confusion that you don't need. And you don't have to put up with it. You can customise everything to uh, to fit exactly how you want it to work. And there's all sorts of stuff you can fiddle with in these settings, but I probably wouldn't delve into too many of them too much at the start. But this formats page, you are going to want to have a look at to make sure the game feels a little bit more comfortable for you and then from there you'll hit start new game and you are presented with a number of options um if you're just looking to play a normal career mode believe it or not you hit career and that's the one we're going to be having a look at today that's your kind of standard vanilla football manager you do have the option to do that career online with friends though which if you're on xbox i know it's quite a common thing to do over there fantasy draft is a whole separate game mode that i'll cover in a completely separate video but you effectively start from nothing and go through a draft to build a team and then compete either against the AI or against your friends, either in real life or over the internet. Um, or you can create a club and have them inserted into career mode as well. There is going to be a versus mode coming next year as well, but we don't quite know what that's going to look like yet. Again, when that appears, there will definitely be videos about that telling you all about it. But if we just go into career mode, and the first thing it asks you to do is select the team you want to manage. Now, you can manage any club from any of the leagues in the game. You can do an international job. You can do a club and an international job, which unless you want quite a slow experience, if you want to do international management, I'd usually pair it with a club because only playing eight to 12 games a year with long gaps in between 
is a bit of a drag. So if you really want to do international management, I'd probably do a club as well. Or you can just start unemployed and apply for jobs once the game's up and running and see what you end up with. If you're completely new to the game, I would recommend the best starting point is to pick the team you support in real life because that's a team where you're more likely to know the players, know the formations and the styles of play that they're going to be using. And it just makes it that little bit easier for you to get up and running with the game mechanics if you're not also having to figure out how to interpret what you're seeing in terms of your squad and players and turn that into a tactic that will suit them. So for me, that would involve dropping down into the championship and selecting Peterborough United. They're the team I support. And from there, you can just hit quick start and have the game do everything else for you. I would probably recommend you go advanced setup because there's some things in here that you might want to tweak. But like I say, if you're completely new, just hit quick start there and you don't have to worry about any of the rest of this stuff um, as you go through. But I wanted to show you what these settings do, what they change, because you have the option to select the number of leagues that you're going to have loaded at the moment. As standard, we've just got England, League 2 and above loaded up because we're managing in England and we'll be doing that on a small database, which it says means a rough play account of 8,000 860. That's approximate, apparently. That seems pretty accurate to me. And then based on that setup, so those number of leagues and those number, number of players and the specs of your PC, it then gives you an estimated game speed, which is a star rating out of five. So you can see for me and my fancy pants gaming computer, based on that setup, I'd have an estimated game speed of five star. And it even interprets that for you um, just to explain in English what that would actually do for you. If I was to make that a large database and add on a load more countries, so let's let's do the big five, shall we? Um, if we do the big five, um, you can see that that's taking it down now to a four-star game speed and gives us a rough play account of nearly 37,000 players, and it'll be a little bit slower because of it. If you were going to start adding on everything and just add on loads and loads and loads of leagues let's add loads of leagues just to show what you can go into different continents and all sorts add whatever you want i mean you see it really starts to chug at this point over a hundred thousand players loading and it explains their processing breaks will be considerably longer than average with this setup as a selected level of detail will prove highly demanding for your computer so it's kind of telling you you don't really want to do that that seems like something of a bad idea for me i think as long as you're keeping that estimated game speed above three stars i think that's a nice balance between getting detail in the game and getting the game to run at a reasonable speed with the processing breaks uh, but now i've got my uh my nice pc that i've got these days a fairly typical setup for me would be the big five European leagues, maybe throw Scotland in as well, just because they're neighbouring England. And then I also like to include Argentina and Brazil for a little bit of international football balance. Uh, because otherwise, if you don't have leagues loaded over a long-term save, it tends to produce fewer players in those nations. And what you find is you have World Cups where Argentina and Brazil aren't very competitive. And for me, that breaks the realism a little bit. So by adding all that in, and um, that brings me to that three stars, which means processing breaks are bearable um, and it doesn't impact too much on game speed. So I like that. I might drop it down to include the conference north and south as well. Ooh, I've dropped below three stars. OK, if I'm going to do that, maybe I'll just have the top divisions in Argentina and Brazil. And that gets me back to three stars again. So I think we'll do a setup like this one for this save. And then you've got lots of these options down at the bottom here as well. They all have the little tooltip on that explains what the option means. So if you're not sure about anything, you get this little eye symbol next to it. That will explain what it means to you. But to give you a rough overview of how I like to set things up, you have the option to use fake players and staff. By all means, experiment with it. If it's your first time ever playing the game, I've already recommended you pick the club you support. Use the players that are in real life as well. Because if you use fake players and staff, it basically deletes all of the real data from the game and just randomly generates it all. So I guess it's a nice way to pure, to play the game in its purest possible form because you can't bring any outside knowledge in, but it does mean that you're then not going to have any idea who's any good or not, and it makes it a lot harder. So I would leave that unchecked. Um, it, the game will always use real fixtures where it can, so that's for the licensed leagues. Um, you can ask it not to do that if for some reason you don't want to use real fixtures. I, I don't think I've ever clicked do not use real fixtures. Um, likewise, with do not add key staff, what that what the game will do as standard 
if it loads up a club and they don't have a physio, for example, it will automatically give them a physio as standard, just so it's not an extra job that you have to do when you start at the club. If you really want to do everything yourself, though, you can click that. And if there's no physio there, you won't have a physio. You'll have to go and find one when the game starts. But again, I don't think I've ever clicked that. And um, add players to playable teams kind of does the reverse of that with players. As standard, if a team has no players in the database, it will load up with no players. So this usually happens for the tiny little teams in the smaller countries, lower down. They might not, there might not be a football manager researcher in that country for that team. So the database doesn't know who's there. So it'll just leave them with no players. And then the AI will start to bring players in once the save starts. And um, if you don't want to have to, if you don't want that to happen, you can hit add players to playable teams and it will do what it would do for fake players and staff, but just for those specific teams. So it'll add players to make sure every, every team in the game has at least a first team squad of players to play with from the start. So I tend to leave that on because it means that there's not such a mad dash for free transfers at the start of the game, especially if you're playing lower down the leagues. You have the option to disable first window transfer activity. So if you want a realistic game, because obviously the games come out in October, the transfer window closed at the end of August. It's got up to date um, squad lists for the end of August. So if you want to play through to Christmas with those realistic squad lists, you can click that and no transfers will happen in that first uh, transfer window that's already happened in real life. So you can click that if you want to go full realism mode. Attribute masking is like the fog of war. So it means that you'll know how good all of your players are. You'll be able to see all of their attributes. But for players at other teams, unless you've scouted them or watched them, you won't necessarily know what their attributes are. You might have a few. You might have nothing at all. But if you're, if you're just clicking through the squads in the Brazilian third division trying to find the next Pele, you won't be able to see him because you won't see any of those attributes until you've scouted those players. It's a bit of a personal preference thing. I like to have attribute masking on because I like to have to use the scouts and stuff in games. Equally, I know there are a lot of people out there who like to be able to go to the player search screen and bring up a list of everybody, every left winger who's got acceleration of 17 or above and crossing of 15 or above, and they want a list of them. So whichever one of those appeals the most to you, click this button accordingly. I always have attribute masking on. So like I say, I like the realism of it. Um, prevent control of teams with managers in place means when it comes to selecting your team, you can only select a team that doesn't have a manager in real life. Um, so again, it's an added realism thing. Um, I don't tend to pick that ever. Um, and then lastly, you have the option to prevent the use of the in-game editor. Um, if I was just playing a private save, I'd probably leave that off just in case there was something that broke and I needed to fix. But for all my YouTube saves, I always tick the box to prevent use of the in-game editor. So no one can accuse me of cheating. Um, the in-game editor isn't even out yet. It doesn't come out until the release of the full game, but I still like to have it ticked. Just so no one can say, Kev, you're cheating. Um, lastly, you get to pick when your game starts. I'm managing in England, so it makes sense to pick one of the English start dates. Um, you can just leave it as the preset one, or if you don't want to do the whole of the preseason, you can have it so it starts um, just before the league season starts, so you can have it when the Champions League starts, however you want it to set up. I'm just going to leave it as the standard one. From there, you hit start game and it will do a whole load of background data, database, fancy computer wizardry, uh, depending on how quick your computer is, how good your computer is and how much stuff you've decided to load up, largely depending on how good that star rating is. That'll dictate how long this takes. It's not usually going to be more than about a minute or so to set up the database, but for the interests of not having this video drag on any longer than it needs to, I'll cut here and come back when it's done, even though it's probably only going to be another 20 or 30 seconds or so. So it's finished doing all of the background shenanigans. As you can see, it's now given us a changing room with our club personalised in the background, which is a very cool, nice touch. And because I've played the game already this year, it's loaded up a previous profile, but for the purposes of showing you how the setup works, we'll go through the create profile process. A lot of this is very self-explanatory. You just put your own details in um, and, you know, just pop them in here. If you want to change any of this, particularly you can. There's not really much of an in-game reason to change any of this. I don't know why I'm showing you my real date of birth. I'm showing my age here. None of you guessed I was 39, surely. Um, you put your favourite team into whoever you want to put it into. Um, I mean, you... I've put, I put my own name wrong there. 
You've always got the option to add yourself with different nationalities, second nationalities or other languages. If you're managing in another country, for example, if I was doing a save in Germany, I might want to add additional languages spoken as German or make a second nationality as German just to make it a little bit easier for me to settle into the new club. Uh, for me, I just tend to leave it as it is a standard. One thing you don't want to fiddle with on this page if you're new is this experience level. Um, if you want to learn about everything as you go, make sure you leave that tick. Teach me about key management concepts. Pros can untick it and just set up a load of bunch of stuff here. But if you want the tutorials to come through as and when they're ready, leave that ticked because then you get the tutorials. Um, but then the rest of this, I mean, you can you can do it however you want to do it, but it doesn't really make any difference to the to the game. There you go. Let's make myself a, a short, fat lady, just like in real life. Um, you can pick your hairstyle however you want it. That one looks pretty realistic for how I am. Give myself, um, yeah, we'll just pick that. So you do have the option to randomize, but why would I randomize when I could put this kind of care and attention into making myself look as realistic as possible? Do we have eye color on there as well? No, no option for eye color. There you go. Give myself some spectacles. You can also import a photograph and do a 3D um, rendering of yourself as well. Um, but I haven't done that. There you go. That is pretty close to how I look in real life, I think. And then the next important screen is this one, where you choose your managerial style. As a beginner, I would very much recommend clicking the box where it says suggest badge based on the team you're managing. If you leave that unticked, you can pick your level of um, coaching badges and your level of past playing experience. And that basically then has an impact on what your attributes can be. So if you set this as low as possible, um, like Sunday League footballer with, I mean, you can even have yourself with no coaching badges, um, you then don't have much attributes to play with, uh, which means you'll be worse at all this stuff in game. Again, you've got the little tool tip to show you what these things actually do. Um, but, like I say, I would recommend ticking it based on matching the club you're managing or even if you want a nice easy ride, max it, max them out. Max them out all the way and then you can pretty much maximise some of these stats which could be really helpful for you. But I'll even tick like that. Um, you can then choose what your management style focus will be. This basically allows you to create a, a preset manager. If you don't really want to work out at this stage what all these different attributes mean, but you know you want to focus on youth development, if you click youth development, it will then allocate your attributes so that it so that you'll be better at the youth development aspects of things. So you get a 20 out of 20 for working with youngsters, which, believe it or not, affects your ability to work with younger players in training. Your youngster knowledge will be better than your player knowledge, for example. Um, for me... I don't think it really matters. I mean, we'll pick motivator. I like motivator as an option. Motivation is key in football manager. And then you've got this slider as well, um, which means you can take your focus more towards coaching or more towards the mental side of management. The way this used to be when it was first introduced is, do you want to be more of a tracksuit manager or more of a suit wearing manager? For me, I'm usually further at this end of the scale. If you're at a smaller club, you might want to be down here because you're less likely to have a large coaching team to work with you. So you want yourself as your manager to be pretty useful at coaching as well. Um, whereas if you're at a bigger club and you've got 30 coaches working under you, you probably just want to be the guy at the top who manages everything at Peterborough. I guess we probably need to be nearer that kind of end of the scale. Um, and then from there, you can reselect these things. So I'm a motivator who leans more towards uh, the mental attributes, um, which means I'm going to max out motivating, which as you would imagine, affects my ability to motivate my players as a group in team talks and team meetings. What it effectively means is the higher that rating is, the more likely the stuff that I say is to have a positive impact on players. If I've got a motivating of one, then the team talks and things are going to be harder to make them work successfully. So I'll leave it like that. Hit confirm um, and wait. And then you get this screen. So you're in the office um, just announcing all of your bits and bobs. You can obviously read through all that if you want to read through it all, um, but you don't really need to. Um, I certainly don't really need to because it's the club that I support. I know, our, I know our history. I know what league we're in and what our stadium is called and all that kind of stuff. But if you're managing somewhere you've never managed before, by all means, spend some time reading through all that. This is quite helpful because you get a team report 
where the game says based on the squad that you've got this is the this is the formation and group of players that probably best suits the players that you've got in the squad so i already know before i've even clicked on the squad view um that playing a 532 and um, with an attacking midfielder is probably going to be a decent starting tactic for us and get an idea of which players will fit into which roles in that system. You can immediately see who your best young player is, who your top earner is, who's your captain, who's your best player. Just get a lot of nice information early on from this screen, as well as getting a summary of what loan obligations are going on with the club. So we've got Connor Coventry loaned in for the season from West Ham and Ryan Broom and Sir Hat Tazdemir are both loaned out until the end of the season to Plymouth and Barnet respectively. So we can't use them and he's only in on loan and isn't in the team anyway. And um, we'll hit next again. And this gives us an idea of our club vision. This is basically what the board are going to judge your performance on. Um, some clubs will have more or less stuff in here. Peterborough have a lot of club culture stuff. So I know that in order for my board to be happy with how I'm managing the club, we need to play attacking possession football. So there's no use coming in and playing counter-attacking. The board aren't going to like it. Um, they want me to sign players under the age of 22 for the future and players fr um, from the lower leagues of English football. Um, they want players under the age of 23 for the first team and they want me to develop players using the club's youth system. So very much a, a club culture of signing young players from lower down, developing our own youngsters, lots of focus on youth, being able to bring youngsters in, sell them on, um, and do it whilst playing attractive, possession-based, attacking football. You can see which of these are more important than others. So the most important thing and um, the desired stuff um, is play attacking football and sign players under the age of 23 for the first team. So if you come in and play a flat-back six and sign a bunch of old men, you're immediately going to get off with the wrong foot with a board. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be sacked because if you do that and win the league, you're probably going to be fine even if you're doing everything the opposite of what the board would want. But just like in real life, if you're doing everything the way the board want, you're likely to have a little bit more leeway, a little bit more wiggle room, where if you come in and you do poorly initially, but you're playing the right way, you sign the right kind of players, you might get a little bit more time in the job than if you've come in, done everything the opposite of what the board want, and you're failing, they'll probably move you on a little bit quicker. The five-year plan for the club, for this club, is to sign young players to develop for a profit, and that's another desired one. But then the first required thing is we must work within the wage budget. So it, all of this stuff is important, varying degrees of importance, but the big important thing, if we go over our wage budget, they are not going to be happy, and it's one of those things that could lead to getting fired. Um, likewise, for this season, they want me to avoid relegation, um, which is required. So if we get relegated while spending over our age budget, it doesn't matter if we've done all the rest of this stuff, I'm probably getting fired. Um, and then they've got expectations for the cup competitions, but they don't really matter. So we don't need to worry too much about that. And then we've got the long-term goals as well to become established in the championship, eventually working towards getting into the championship playoffs. But again, the further into the future we get, the less important this kind of stuff becomes because obviously we'll we'll target them into more appropriate stuff uh, once we get closer to them. We don't really know now whether we're going to be in a position in five years to compete for the championship playoffs because we could get relegated this season and not make it back to the championship, in which case all of this stuff changes. But of course, if that happens, I probably won't be the manager anymore. Um, you've then got all of these um, all of these tutorials. If you are completely brand new to the game, I would recommend getting them all sent today. It tells when they're going to be coming um, some of these are showing for me as already complete because I've done them as part of other saves. Um, but yeah, I would just, I'd ask for them all for today. You want as many tutorials as possible right at the start of the game because you don't know what you're doing. So that's why you're watching this video. So get the tutorials in. And then lastly, before we go off and meet the team, um, it asks you if you want a press conference to meet the media. It doesn't really matter one way or the other. I probably don't. I don't really like doing the press conferences. Do you want an intra-squad friendly to assess the squad? Yeah, I think that's quite useful. And how often do you want a meeting with your backroom staff? Um, you can choose how often you have the new feature in the game, which is the backroom staff meeting. Um, it's weekly by standard, and I think they're quite useful, so I, I leave mine as weekly. But if the, if the idea of meetings bores you, stick it out to every month, and then you can even skip them when the time comes as well. So we confirm all that. We're then asked to save the game. 
Um, so you can call it whatever you want to call it and just get it saved into your uh, into your top slot on there. And then you are manager of the club. The first thing you see is your inbox. And then you kind of work through all these messages, get to meet the team, all that kind of stuff. But that will all be covered in another video because we've done quite a lot looking at just the basic setup of the game. So if you uh, if you followed along to this point, your game is set up, you're ready and raring to go. Don't worry. There'll be another video out in the next day or two, picking things up from here and going through your first week in the job. So what do you, you're in, your game's set up, you're ready to go. What do you do in the first week in the job? That video is coming soon and it will just carry on from this point in this save as well. So you'll be able to get an idea of how I would go through my first week, picking a tactic, sorting training, sorting the uh, the transfer policy, that kind of thing. It's all coming soon. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. If you found this video useful, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it for me. The more likes, the more likely I am to do more stuff like this in the future. Subscribe, as I said before, make sure your notifications are on. And thank you very much for watching.